I have pulled up. This is um, Solex Reflective, so I've got some of that, two bags of that. And then I have some Green Reflective in a couple of different bags. So we're gonna make us a cute, excuse me, we're gonna make a cute little wreath. Ugh. We're gonna make a wreath, and I'm gonna show you how I like to uh, form a wreath. Okay, so I've got a cup around here somewhere. Let's see, is that about right? Yes, so I'm just gonna use a cup. This is just a 16 ounce little tub. You could use a little butter cup, whatever. And I'm gonna put that right in the center of, you know what, let's paint our canvas first. See, I'm getting ahead of myself because I got excited about doing a wreath. So let's paint our canvas, even if it's just a little bit of something, something. So let's grab some pearl. Let's do pearl. Where's pearl? Pearl, where are you? Here you are. Let's do a little bit of metallic white pearl, just something uh, metallic-y and soft. And let's do, let's do a metallic green too. So I have metallic white. Now Hobby Lobby, they are messing with our system and they do not carry this color anymore or this brand, the Anita's brand, but it doesn't really matter what brand, just a metallic white, all right? This is Festive Green by Deco Art. It's a metallic green, and we're gonna use a smidge of that just to give our background some color. Now, when I'm using metallics, I like to use a sponge brush because it lays out the metallics really nicely. So we're gonna go ahead and get that ready as well, all right? So I'm just going to squirt some metallic pearl. And I always do that, uh, always use too much when I do that, but we'll figure it out. And I'm gonna just brush, make sure that's clean. I'm gonna use my sponge brush and just get my entire canvas covered really fully all the way. And then I'm gonna give you a little hint about working with metallic paints because I don't know if you've ever painted with metallics, but it always seems like it's like splotchy. So if you've had that issue in, look, in your metallic paint, I'm gonna show you how to rectify that problem. So we're gonna just get all of that pearl color, nice and even, okay? So here's what happens with metallic. I don't know if you can see on my canvas right now, but you can see like right here where it's kind of splotchy. You can also see right here where I went across. And here's what happens. When you, metallic paints actually have tiny microscopic bits of metallic particles in it. And they're like three, 10, 12 sided, they're multi-dimensional. So when you're applying your metallic paint, if you are going in random directions back and forth, then you are laying out those particles on like different sides of that microscopic, whatever you wanna call it, right? So how to get it nice and smooth, once you get your paint on, you wanna take your brush and pull in one direction. That will lay all those metallic particles out in the same direction so you don't have splotches. Now, I'm gonna show you again. Can you see that, how I just made a big old splotch? And now it, it's not nice and smooth. So you can see how that works. So let's pull that back down. Now let's add just a smidgey of our green. And I'm going, I'm gonna scooch this over just a little. And get my plate in. I'm just gonna put a little bit of this green, festive green, it's a metallic as well, on my plate. Not too much. I just put a little line of it. I don't know if you can see it on this dirty plate, but right there, just a little line of green. And I'm just gonna come and just pull some of that green through. I need more than that, don't I? Pull some of that green through my canvas in the same direction as I pulled my pearl, okay? So let's try that again. I'm gonna just get into that green. And hang on, I think I got excessed. And I'm gonna pull through 
That's that's kind of messy. Oh, Lord have mercy. Okay. We'll smooth that out. All right. That's better. We'll get a little bit more. A little bit more. Hang on. I got to hold on to my hat here. And just pull that green just so we don't have just a boring, plain background. You could do your background any way you want. You could leave it pearl. I just like to have a little extra something, something. There's a hair. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna just stick this in my water and I'll put that aside. And I'm gonna hit this with my heat gun to get it dry so that we can move forward, All right? So, while I'm blow drying, I can answer one or two questions, but I want to ask you one first. If you just joined since we started this live, I want you to pop a heart in the comments. Pop a heart in the comments if you just joined. Yay! I'm so excited, and you're going to love our cute little gingerbread gonna be so much fun. So last year we did a gingerbread house and ever since then I've just been obsessed with the gingerbread kind of theme and as as always you know Hobby Lobby copies me all the time. I'm just kidding y'all seriously don't take that seriously at all. But Hobby Lobby is chock full of gingerbread stuff. The nerve of them. And I actually am super excited about it because it's helpful to you guys too. And then I can go and get all the fun. Yay. Hey, Linda. Y'all can go and get all the fun. Ooh, that was still wet. All the fun gingerbread stuff at the Hobby Lobby. All right. I think we're dry. Okay. That's how it works when you're, when you're live. You got to dry the paint. Okay, so nice and uh, metallic -y. You can see it just kind of flashes that green. It doesn't look as like bold as it does uh, on the camera. It does look a little softer. Um, so now, now we can use our cup. I wanna put my cup right in the center of my canvas. So just find the middle, just eyeball it, it's fine. Just eyeball the center, put your um, cup there. And I'm going to just take some glass. This is green reflective. And I'm gonna just go around my cup. I'm gonna put something on my cup so it doesn't move too. Something a little heavy right there. Cause I'm a, a little crazy. I get a little excited. I'm not a gentle person. <laughs> I'm just gonna start going around in a circle with my glass. So that was, I don't know, that was maybe um, um, half a pound of green reflective. That's not enough. That's not a wreath. That's not a wreath, y'all. So I have like a smidge more of some green. So we'll just add that too. And I'm just gonna add a couple of different of my green colors. And these are just bags that I have. I always keep like all the colors, like a partial bag of all the colors around my paint desk so I don't have to go get into our inventory. Oops, we don't want that in there, do we? That's like a piece of stick or something. <laughs> That's not funny. All right, so I'm just, and this is Solex. I wanna show you what this looks like. Guys, we are almost out of Solex on the store. And we are having a hard time with our manufacturer with Solex and with Green Classic. But the Solex, green is green, and the Solex is kind of a blue-green. Um, so we are either, we're either sold out or almost sold out, but we're gonna get some as quick as we can. As soon as they get it back in stock, we'll have it, okay? But I'm gonna intermix my green reflective with a little bit of that blue-green Solex. And we're gonna just start making our wreath a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. This is Solex Reflective. So 
So let's add some of that. Why not? Right? I'm just going to keep going. It's like a big old donut. I'm just going to keep going around. Oh. Hang on, y'all. That had dust. That had some icky in it. All right. We didn't want that. And there, here's a little more Solex Reflective, so I'm going to add a little bit more of that. Thank you, Jan. We'll add a little bit more to, just to bring our brief out. I'm going to make sure it's equally, like here, it's like probably three quarters of an inch from the edge down towards me. I was, I've been a little less generous, so we'll add some of that. And then I have a little bit of green left, the regular green that we can add. We throw these away. That we can add on top. But before I do, I'm gonna go ahead and move my cup. So I'm gonna just shake it out a little. That's a lot of glass, y'all. Probably about two pounds total. It's not a tiny amount of glass. I'm gonna go ahead and just wiggle the center of my cup and lift that out, right? So now we have a nice wreath shape. I like to just scooch some of that back in, but I'm not gonna try to make it perfect because I don't like things that are perfect because in all reality, nothing is perfect. So I'm gonna just spread that out some. And before we get started decorating our wreath, we're going to add just a little bit of green on top Yes, Angie, I love it. I like to use a lot of glass because, you know, I'm just heavy handed. So I have this tiny little bag, sample pack of the green. I'm just gonna sprinkle some, that, some of that back on top of that Solex. So basically I use green reflective, a little bit of Solex, and then Solex reflective in my wreath, right? So look how pretty that is. All ready. Just gorgeous, but we gotta decorate it. We can't just leave it like this, right? So I have in my possession all the Christmas things. And I'm gonna grab them and show you my Christmas uh, collection of all of just craziness that I've been collecting over the years, ever since I started doing these um, pieces and doing these classes, I just save and save and save all my Christmasy stuff. So I've got two big old boxes. Oh, I had to go get it. I've got two big old boxes just of Christmas type things. Look at this. I have, <laughs> I'm gonna show you a couple things. I have this bucket of fun. Look at this. It is just a little tub of all kinds of red and green and purple and blue ornaments. 99% of this came from Hobby Lobby, okay? In the miniature department, you can find these little half inch little nuggets. Now I also have just a bag full of cut glass. This is, I don't wanna get this out because this is probably still sharp, but I have a bag that has all sorts of cut green and red glass in it, and I get that from things like this. This was an old um, candle vase from Hobby Lobby, like a, um, what do you call the little candle thingies? The little, you know what I'm talking about, put a candle in it. Um, and uh, I just cut around it to make broken pieces. So we may use some of that, I don't know, but here is the piece de resistance, y'all. Look what I have, oh my goodness. I also have another little tub of ornaments. I have, look at these, miniature um, pine cones. So cute, votive, thank you. My words, my words are gone. I'm really quite tired, y'all. I have some acorns. These all came from Hobbly Lobbly. Some cute little acorns. I have stars. That would be so cute, y'all, look. Little star. I have jingle bells. Guys, these craft stores are so awesome and fun. And when you are going in those craft stores looking for stuff to decor decorate your art with, think outside the box. Because almost every department you can 
I'm not doing anything, Jane. I'm just showing little art pieces, little uh, um, stuff that I got at Hobby Lobby. Um, you can find things in almost every department that um, you can use in your art. These are just cute little peppermints. Cute, cute, cute. More jingle bells and little rustic looking stars snowflakes. I'm just, y'all, I hadn't even begun to dig into my box yet. Um, I have, I was gifted a long time ago a bunch of these little icicles that are super, super cute. And what was that? I just dropped something. I don't know what it was. Bags and bags of little miniature ornaments. Christmas lights from the miniature department. These are so super cute. More bags and bags. I told y'all, this is about probably six or eight years of collection of all this kinds of stuff. So let me see what else is down here. Snowflakes, Hobby Lobby. These are old. I don't even know if they carry this brand anymore. That's how old these are. So let's see. I have all of the things, just so many little things that we could add into our wreath to make it gorgeous. So we're gonna start with, hang on. I thought I had a little bobbly thing, but I don't. We don't have it. Uh, okay, I'm gonna start with just some of these little ornaments. I'm trying to decide which direction I want to go. So bear with me. I do think I'm going to keep this star in here, but it looks like it has a little bit of overspray on it or something. So I'm going to grab one that doesn't. This one looks like it was spray painted. It's got that gummit. It's got something on it, some sort of debris. Oh, that's why it's painted silver on one side. There you go. I am gonna go ahead and get one of these and I'm gonna cut off that little tip, okay? So I'm gonna get my glass nippers and where it's got that little circle hook on it, I'm just gonna cut that off. We don't need that. So just bend it and pop that sucker right off. It pops off fairly easily. All right, so I do wanna use this. I just like the rustic nature of it. So we're gonna just stick that right in, right there. So, yeah, Sally, go girl. So now I'm just gonna start going in to my little basket of goodies and pulling out some stuff and we're just gonna we're gonna do everything but the kitchen sink how about that we're gonna make an everything but the kitchen sink wreath so i have some ornaments let's just start adding a few we'll put i'm gonna do them in three z's so we have pink and this little iridescent one and then we can do like a green and a blue, I like three of these, a little iridescent. And let's get some red in this party. Let's do green, red, and blue. So you could just be uh, adventurous and add in, these are plastic. You uh, be adventurous and add in whatever makes your heart happy. Let's see, I got another little ornament that has a string on it. I'm gonna break it off. Get off there, man. Get off. It doesn't wanna come off, so we won't use that. All right, so I am just dipping in and grabbing things out of my bag, and then we'll just keep working. Okay, so here's another little green. Um, a clear, and let's do a blue again. Uh, that's just a random bead that I picked up in the pile. We'll do one more set of colors. 
Make sure we do red and blue. Y'all know blue is my color. Blue and red. So that's just a good start, isn't it? Just a good start. So now I'm just gonna look into my little baggie and see what else we have in here that we might could play with. Okay, this, most of the stuff that's in here are just little beads that came from Hobby Lobby, okay? Like maybe string beads, like this kind of stuff that uh, I broke apart and they're just loosey goosey inside. Look at that red, a little bit of heaven right there. Uh, just Lucy beads that I have just picked apart. So I'm just gonna pick some out of the bottom. I'm gonna show you a handful of them up close, just real quick. Let me get enough in my hand that you can actually see what I have. Grab them up, they're kind of iridescent and they come in a jar at Hobby Lobby. So this is what they look like, all right? So they're gold and pink and blue and green, and all those delicious colors. And they're just floating in the bottom of that bag. So here's what I'm gonna do. Yes, you should always do what makes your heart happy, no matter what, no matter what. What is the point if you're not? So I'm just gonna randomly throw in a couple of these beads here and there between all my ornaments. Oh, I got a little pink one right there. We'll add something to, for it to hang out with. We're just gonna add some of that. And we'll add another little one of those and a green right there. I have this cute little piece left over from last year's gingerbread house too. We may add that. I'm just gonna sit it here and think about uh, think about it and as we move along. Okay, I think I've about utilized everything in here that's in my little grab bag number one that we could use. So let's look at grab bag um, Stephen. I had a box of some things um, that I brought in here. Oh, here it is. Oh. Hang on, guys. I have another box. Um, look at these. I think we should make a Christmas tree out of these. Look at that. It's just a bag full of um, beads that are just wonderful gummy bear colors, aren't they? All right, so let me go through here, and I'm going to see if I can't pull out. I know you can't see my bin, but I'm going to uh, pull out the things I want to show you, so don't worry. Um, I just came across some of these. These came from either Hobby Lobby or Michaels, and they're just plastic, acrylic, little cabicons, little diamondy looking things. Let's stick a couple of those in there. We'll do one there. We'll do one here and one here. So this is, like I said, everything but the kitchen sink. Everything. So that's cute. I'm going to start pulling some things out to show you. I know you can't see. Here's, I have like a case of these. We need to figure out uh, what we can do with, with these little things because we did a chandelier inside the Shattered Circle and uh, I had bought on eBay just a whole box full of these um, little, what do you call them, the little droplet things. We need to figure out a way to use those because I have hundreds of them. So let's keep that out. All right, so I have some icicles. I told y'all I'll squirm by seeing my pants in that this might be crazy. So I hope y'all believed me. <laughs> if you didn't, you believe me now. I found... I'm trapping myself into my little area. Now that I'm adding all these colors, tell me how you feel about this. Yeah, Angel Wings is a great idea. Butterfly, dragonfly, yes. Y'all are so smart. I'm not sure if I'm feeling this now that we're adding all this color. We might have to swap that out for something else. Um, we're gonna leave him there for now. 
but we may have to swap that out. Okay, I know, we have acorns. Do you think a the acorns would work? Flower petals, great idea. I think these are too fall. Yeah, let's don't use those. We'll go into this red bucket of ornaments. All the good juicy stuff. I'm just not feeling that star, don't you think? Yeah, if I had been more prepared and knew what I was going to be doing instead of just deciding at the last minute, we wouldn't be going through this chaos. <laughs> That's okay. So, yeah, this is cute, too. This is a little leftover piece. Oh, that's a good idea. Where'd, oh, where'd the silver one go? Oh, that is a great idea. Look at you. See? When you're under pressure, it's hard to uh, make decisions. This is a little piece I got at Hobby Lobby, too. It was a whole pack of little gingerbread cookies. Would that not look so cute? With that, OMG, that would be so cute in that little art piece. So, 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 so cute. Um, I'm just going to start doubling up on my ornaments because I have a huge, huge bucket of those. So let's do that. Let's pull out some red. These are a little bit bigger. So let's just kind of tuck in some red classic Christmas color. Tuck in red. Are both of those girls back there still working? And I don't know. I'm an odd numbers kind of girl, so like one, two, three. If you put resin over palms, it's going to make them not palmy. Does that make sense? Okay, these came from Hobby Lobby as well. These are just little plasticky ornaments, okay? So yeah, I think we are gonna do more of the red. I'm just gonna stick a couple of these in. Just lay them in wherever your little heart desires. Let's get some shiny orns. I'm just tucking them into the glass a little. Oh, gosh, look. These are cute. Let me grab a bunch. Look at these little things. These came from Hobby Lobby, too. They're like little candy pieces. Super, super, super cute. We'll stick a couple in here and there. We'll put one over here. Let's get another... Okay, we have red. Let's do another red. We'll do six. This is gonna take some, this is gonna take some resin, y'all. <laughs> we'll stick a red here. I love the red too. I used to have an all red tree. Now I haven't had a Christmas tree in a while because of my cats, because my cats uh, destroy my Christmas tree up here, like in this area, you mean? Um, my cats like to tear up my Christmas tree, so I hadn't put one up in a while. Last year, we did put a tree up, but we did not decorate it. We just put the, it was a pre-lit tree, and, and these are just little beads, just little red beads from Hobby Lobby. Yes, this would need a wire. It's going to be heavy. So, I'm just going to place a couple of those. Try to dig to the bottom because there's some deliciousness at the bottom. Oh, we have silver. Let's throw some silver in. We'll add some silver down here by our silver star. We'll throw a little silver in here. Now, this is starting to look super fun, isn't it? I thought I saw a little piece of gold one. I'm just digging, digging for all the good stuff. Oh, this is so much fun though. Look, it's like decorating your tree and not having to worry about the cats tearing it up. Just decorate everything else. I don't want that in there. I found something. Oh, this little crystal, another one of those little crystals. We'll just tuck 
And just for chunkiness, that's all. It's clear, so, oh, here's a gold one. Let's add a little gold. I think we're getting there, guys. I know. So yeah, in the Shattered Circle too, there is a whole section on how to hang wire on your art, when, where, and why. What, when you need to use uh, wire and when you need to not use wire. And in reality, heavier things, you shouldn't use wire because the wire could break, but it depends on the weight, really. I'm trying to tuck in a little bit of a goldish color here and there. Let's see. It is so colorful. I don't want that. It is looking so cute. Here's a green one. Let's stick a green one somewhere right in there. That looks good, doesn't it? I'm trying to look at my picture now to see if that, I'm looking at my um, computer screen so I can tell where I need something. Because looking straight down at it with my nose on top of it, I can't really tell. But if I look at the screen, I can tell something needs to happen right here. A little nakey, a little nakey right there. And let me look again. We might be a little nakey right here and right here. Huh? Yay, Kathy! Okay, it's 12 by 12 right, right here. I'm covering up with my with my little bowl. Now I have these icicles too. Let's while we're just kind of making decisions, let's pull some of these out and see what they look like because we might be able to add some of that in. Oh, this is gonna be nice. Hang on. I'm gonna cut off a piece so I can show you. Well, that's not gonna work. I need scissor gloves. I need a scissor. Ugh. So these are icicles and I'm gonna try not to mess up my tree, but they're all different sizes. So we could even use some of that, just break off the kind of pieces or the size we wanted. I'm gonna skip that for now because my scissors are not on my table. I'm gonna try to do a little bit of cleanup. And I got one more bag I'm gonna kind of peruse through. Oh, and there's money in this one. There is uh, 36 cents in this bag. What do you think about that? So here's my little, my last little bag of goodies. And most of what's in here is like broken vase, okay? Like the votive, remember? The votive that I was showing you earlier that came from Hobby Lobby. It was like $5.99 and I know I got it half price because I'm cheap and that is the only time I'll buy that stuff. <laughs> and I just cut around it and break off uh, little pieces of that, and this is a good example um, of how I'm trying to grab up a couple of pieces of that green. So I like to break them off, and then you end up with pieces like this, like little leafy kind of shapes. Can you see that? Yeah, I, I'll fix that. I'm not worrying about it right now because I feel certain that I will bump it again and uh, probably five or six times. So we will, we'll, once we resin, we'll adjust everything. All right, so, oh my goodness, look at this. We have glass strips in this bag too. Did not know those were there. So let's see if there's anything in here. We've got a lot of red, like red little vase pieces, but I don't think we're, we're gonna need that. I do like this though. Remember last year when I found at uh, Home Goods, I found those globes that were red and white pearlescent. Look at that. That is spectacular. Wait a minute, y'all. Hang on. Hang loose. Let's see. Now I'm digging for gold. This is just a bucket of junk. So 
I've got a couple of pieces of that globey thing. I think we're gonna make like a faux flower or something instead of that star. It feels more, it feels more right. <laughs> it feels more right. Yes, Leslie, see, it's time to break them out. I'm gonna put a couple of little smaller pieces in the middle of that. And we're gonna use this and I'm gonna put something right in the center. So um, it kind of looks flower-esque. Look at that, I like that. It's almost like the bow or a flower on your uh, wreath. You gotta have a flower on your wreath, right? All right, so now I need something for a flower center. I don't see anything in this bag, but maybe we'll use, oh, I saw something earlier. Hang on, let me see if I can find it. It was in, it was like a little ornament and it was kind of like mercury glass looking. Um, hopefully I can put my hands on it and we can use that. Hang on, guys. Sorry. <clears throat> oh, here it is. Here it is. Look at this. I always buy these <coughs> when I see them. <coughs> Excuse me. If you go to like Home Goods or TJ Maxx, I know I feel like I'm on a treasure hunt too, Elizabeth. If you go to Home Goods or TJ Maxx around the holidays, they always have like the little boxes of ornaments, the little small ones, and that's where these came from. This is just um, one that I have left of a single like mercury glass ornament. It's probably about an inch, don't you think? Let's see, that might be too big. Yeah, I think that's a little too big for the flower center. It just takes over. That makes me a little sad, but we're gonna find something else, even if it's a red or a silver ornament. Let's try that. Something a little smaller, but that would have been so nice if it hadn't been too big. That's okay. So let's try this ornament. I wish I had a white one. I'm gonna look for five seconds before I make my decision. Let's see if we have a white, big white ball. Y'all can't see me with my hand in the air. Bent over, looking for goodness. Like, like you said, it's a treasure hunt. It's a treasure hunt of goodness. I don't see anything pearly or white that I can use, which makes, my, makes me sad. But we're gonna use one of these things that I have in my hand. All right. We're just gonna go for it. So I have silver and I have a red. So let's try the red. It kind of is reminiscent of the red in the little petals. So let's see if we can just bury that in a little. Oh, that works. Look at that. I'm gonna show this to you up close and personal when we're done. I'm afraid to move it right now because uh, I'm afraid it's just gonna go and fly around, but very, Gently, I'm gonna hold that up so you can kind of see. That looks good in there. Yes, this is heavy. Ugh, that is so heavy, y'all. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. You can just keep going and going until you um, just can't add another single thing. And look, I just saw these on my desk. They're red and green little pearly things, little, um, string beads, so I think we might as well add these too. What do you think? Might as well, what the heck? Let's throw in a couple of just small, random, especially out on the edge where it's kind of sparse. We just throw in some little beads. So these are just string beads from Hobby Lobby. You can tell Spend a lot of my time and energy in the Hobby Lobby. <laughs> I am gonna have to mix some resin around. It's gonna be fun though. It's gonna be pretty. A little bit. A little bit. All right, I'm just gonna start dropping them instead of like trying to place them because I could do this all night. 
I can just look at it and evaluate, walk away, come back, look some more, add another thing here, another thing there. It just, it's hard to stop sometimes. So let's add a few little greens. Almost done. We'll add, oh, I don't like that little piece of glass. Ick. So I got just four or five little beads left. Find a place for them. Two, one, boom. All right, I'm gonna stop because I could just do this forever. Like right here, I noticed that too. It needs something right here. So I'm just gonna grab up a couple of things from another place. And I think we need one more, maybe right there. That'll have to do. That's gonna have to do. All right, let's see. <laughs> Jesse, that's funny. No, I don't think uh, a half an ounce is gonna do the trick on this one. I think we might maybe have to make an ounce, all right? <laughs> JK, I'm gonna make more than that. I think I'm gonna make, I have Christmas trees too over here that I didn't quite get resined because after um, our challenge was over last night, I had uh, leftover resin. So I started a couple of just Christmas trees um, just to use up my resin. So I do have trees that I can pour excess on. So I do think I am gonna make four ounces of resin because I don't wanna not have enough and y'all be laughing at me. I'll be laughing, and all my feelings will be hurt. Not really, just kidding. Um, let's put a little piece of green right there too. So I, I'm gonna find a cup. Where's my cup, cup, cup? All right, guys. Where? I've got myself trapped at my desk with all the things. So we're gonna make two ounces of resin and two ounces of hardener in our little mix and measure. Now I'm gonna use, obviously I can't use this. It's too small, that's only two ounces. But I do have this, which I got from Amazon. It is, it's from the prep store and it's an eight ounce cup. So I'll be able to pour two ounces of hardener, two ounces of red resin right here in this. Um, and once I get all the resin on, I am going to um, stand up over the top of it and wiggle things around to make sure it's everywhere I want it to be. But right this second, I need to drink water, y'all. I gotta have a drink of water. All this excitement. This was too much fun and it made me thirsty. Hang on. Oh, goodness gracious, that was good. I'm gonna scoop this over just a wee. We are going to mix up some resin, all right? So again, I like these cups. Two thi one thing I love about this cup, this came from Amazon. One thing I love about this cup is I can see the lines, right? I don't have to mark. I can see the um, measurement lines, no red coffee tonight. But one thing I don't like is they're super squishy, okay? And I sometimes am like, I hold my cup too tight and then it like bends. So, um, there, it's a love-hate relationship with these little cups. But I'm gonna pour my art resin, I'm gonna pour two ounces of resin and two ounces of hardener right in my little cup. I'm gonna start with the hardener. So I'm gonna pour my two ounces and I'm gonna be very slow and meticulous so I don't over pour. I still wonder if I'm gonna have way too much, but We'll see, but it, it is gonna take more than half an ounce. I do know that. All right, I'm gonna slow down because I know that's gonna play catch up. We'll let it grow for a second. It's not gonna grow that much, Cindy. All right, that's good. So now I'm gonna take my hardener and I'm gonna move it away from me. And 
Now we're going to pour two ounces of the resin. So let's pour. When it gets to the line, you need to slow down because this stuff does kind of keep growing. So if you pour all the way to your line and it keeps growing, then you've poured too much. Then you're going to have a sticky mess and then you're going to be sad. We don't like to be sad. All right, we're going to let that grow for a second. It's still growing. Put another little drop. And I think that's gonna do it. Let's watch it for a second. Watch it grow. Watch it. Perfect. I wish you could see how perfect it is. Right on the line. All right, so I am gonna use my silicone mixer because this is a bigger cup. And I'm probably gonna have to get a new one because this one is totally trashed. I'm so bad with my tools, y'all. I'm so, so, so bad. This one, it's even got like a little wart, okay? A little wart on it. See the wart? <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Catherine, uh, will you time me? Oh, she said I'll time. So I'm going to just stir and fold and mix. I'm not going to do it really fast. I'm not going to do... Uh, I'm not going to beat it to death. I'm not going to whip it like I would egg whites. You're gonna just slowly mix, scrape the sides of your canvas, scrape, uh, not your canvas, your uh, cup, scrape the bottom and mix all of that together because unmixed resin just makes a sticky mess. So if you've poured a art piece and by the next day, 24 hours later, it's not dry to the touch if it's still sticky, you, it, one of two things has happened. You have either not properly mixed and you had like a spot of resin that wasn't fully mixed in with a hardener or you didn't measure. Maybe you got a little too much resin and a little less hardener than you needed and that is gonna create a sticky mess. That's why I always tell new people to mix in two cups, okay? So if you pour the hardener in one little cup and then pour the resin in another little cup. Then you can pour them, combine them together. When I first started doing resin, we were doing countertops. We were doing resin countertops. And the last thing you want is a customer calling you back and saying, my countertop is still sticky. So what we would do, we'd put hardener in one cup, resin in the other. We would pour the resin into the hardener, mix it up for a couple minutes. Then we would pour but that mixture back into the other cup. So everything, it was just like insurance. Everything was mixed really well. So that's what you wanna do. Um, if you're new, um, is use two cups. Don't try to do what I did and mix into one because if you over pour one or the other, it's gonna be a hot mess. It's gonna be sticky and you're gonna be so upset, okay? So I'm gonna keep, <coughs> excuse me. So I'm gonna keep stirring slowly, getting it all mixed up well. And then we're gonna see if I, thank you, Catherine. We're gonna see if I did probably Personally, myself, Helen, I would probably charge about $130. I wouldn't go less than $75 if I were you. It's a lot of glass and it's gonna be a lot of resin and a lot of pretty little things too. This is a work of art. So don't undervalue yourself. This is a nice piece and I've sold these for $150, $160 before, okay? So now we're gonna get started. So I'm just gonna pick a spot. So I'm gonna start on one side of my flower and I'm gonna work myself all the way around, drizzling my resin. Ooh, I'm already nervous that I didn't make enough. Drizzling my resin over my glass and I'm just gonna follow the wreath all the way around. And here's the thing, 
If I didn't make enough resin, I don't know why I'm second guessing myself because I probably made plenty. Um, if I didn't, I could come back tomorrow. I could actually just mix up some more right now. Let's say I got all the way around and I realized that's gonna not make it. I'm gonna need more resin. You could just mix more right then and there and pour it right on. If you didn't realize it and maybe you missed a spot or two, uh, as you were pouring and the next day you come back and you see that you missed that, if it's within 24 hours, you can just add that resin right back. Now, I'd like to push the envelope, so even if it's uh, more than 24 hours, I will go ahead and resin without sanding because I like, like I said, I'm an envelope pusher. I like to push my luck. Uh, and I hadn't had uh, too many terrible problems with that, but you know, don't push your luck if you're a nervous person because, uh, just because I said I do. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm just uh, that way. I know it's not great sometimes. Sometimes it will bite you in the honey. So, my glasses are falling down on my nose and I feel like I'm talking like an old person. Yes, I'm covering the glass and all of the, the little ornaments with the resin because you want it all stuck together. So it's covering the glass. It's running down in between all the little glass nuggets. It's covering the ornaments and running down the ornaments. That one's a big one, so I'm gonna get really good coverage on that. My, my hair's caught in my glasses. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I see somebody said, why do you drizzle instead of pour? If I pour, there's no, you're gonna use too much resin, number one, if you pour and you're trying to get it all over everything. The, um, the uh, drizzling gives you more control. Oh, Catherine just said that. The, drizz, the drizzling gives you more control and it helps you be accurate in covering all of the little pieces. Um, and, it, and it saves resin too, because you, if you're pouring, you're gonna pour too much. It's gonna be running down the sides. And you, so drizzling just makes it easier to make sure you get all the coverage. Those girls still here? I think my girls are still working in the back. I'm about, they're about to get in trouble. I hear them, I hear them. They're asking for trouble. So we're just gonna keep going all the way around. I'm getting less nervous about my resin mix because I feel like I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. So make sure, so see that I'm being super methodical and going around. I'm not just going all over the place like this. I'm following the wreath and covering all of the bitty bits. All the bitty bits. Almost there. I'm starting to get nervous again for whatever reason. So I don't miscalculate the resin very often, but I sure have done it. Sure have. It's not unheard of, that's for sure. And that just comes from practice. Just years and years and years of practice. It's like, eh, I can eyeball it and say, eh, I think that's gonna take about three ounces. Now it's gonna take about five ounces. All right, we're to our flower, so I'm going to be super generous, especially between the petals, so that all that resin goes underneath. I should lift them, but I'm not gonna. The smart thing to do, and I don't always do the smart thing, actually I'm gonna do it, because it's, it, it's not fair for me to say, tell you what you should do if I'm not gonna do it myself, right? So I'm gonna lift up this one petal 
and I'm gonna drizzle some of that resin underneath it. Cover that glass part, all right? Now, I'm gonna put it back. Now, I'm gonna lift up this glass part because this is such a large piece that it's gonna block the resin from covering that glass that's underneath. So you wanna make sure you have a little resin underneath that big chunk. And then we'll place it back. So much pressure. <laughs> we'll move this one. We'll get some resin underneath. I don't think I'm gonna have enough, y'all. <laughs> now I'm not. I was feeling so confident. Let's put this one back. It's got lots of resin on top though, so. And we'll put this one away. We'll get some resin underneath. back. One more piece. This one. Let's move it. Get some resin underneath. That way it's, we make sure it's all stuck down. Otherwise you might have a rattle toy when you come back tomorrow. Now I'm just going to futz with these little pieces for a minute and make sure they're back where I want them to be. So let me mess with these. Give myself a little flower again. Let's push you back down where you belong. Uh, then I can get there. Come on, stay, stay, man. Now I can take the resin I've left and I'm gonna drizzle over the top of those pieces so that it runs down the sides and adheres to the uh, pieces underneath. All right. I'm spread this on this corner while I'm sitting here. All right, so let's do this piece. Just sp spread it over so that the top is covered as well. This one's really covered nice because I hit it pretty good. And here, I'm just gonna use my little tip to make sure it's covered. Now I'm gonna put a dollop in the center and I'm just gonna use my mixing tool to spread that around in the middle. And we can do that on the corners as well. So that is not a level canvas. I'll definitely have to prop that sucker up. So I'm gonna use my tool to pull the resin out where it's coming out the sides of my wreath. So we got about half that done. Let me turn it. Oh gosh, can you hear that? I think it's a piece of glass. There's gotta be a piece of glass. Oh look, there's a piece of glass under there. That's what was causing the chaos. All right, so we'll put some resin here bring it to the edge. I'm gonna use my fingers, I think. My hands are sticky and it's sticking to my little stir stick and it's driving me crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and divvy out, scrape out any bit of resin I've left. And I did make it y'all, but by the skin of my nose, just barely. I did not have excess, that's for sure. All right, so. I'm gonna use my hands. It's just easier and faster for me to spread that out. Spread, spread. And we're almost there. We're almost there. Got a little bit here. Hang on. I'm gonna turn it one more time and see if I can get one dollop of resin right here. There we go. Whew, that's a relief. All right, so I'm just gonna go around the outside edge with my finger. I don't know when I started doing this, but now I'm obsessed with making sure that edge is clean. 
and I'm gonna just take a peek at it as I turn it and make sure I don't have any skippies. No skippies. I do see some debris we're gonna have to take care of, but we don't have any skips that I can see that I haven't smashed on. All right, so I'm gonna take these gloves off. Wrap them up. And I'm gonna take my little bead tool. If you don't have a friend like Lou who gives you prezzies and gets you a bead tool, it's just like a little, uh, um, um, I don't know what I'm trying to say, like a little mini ice pick is what I was trying to say. You can use the toothpick, but I'm just, I can see that I have, that is actually red glitter, probably from one of the ornaments that was in my little kit or in my, not a kit, in my little bucket of fun. So I'm just gonna make sure, that is exactly what that is. That is glitter. So you could totally just glitterize it. I wanna go around and make sure I don't have any icky stuff that I wanna pick out. Dirt, debris, glitter, not a glitter person. And I don't see any more. I do see a little piece of glitter here. Come on, get out. And I see some in the middle, but there are so many little red sprinkle, sprinkles of stuff that I don't think I'll be able to uh, control that. So I'm going to leave them all there. All right. So now we have all of our ornaments covered. Everything's covered with resin. It's all stretched out to the end. So I'm going to do one last little thing before we call this done. And most of you guys are, are already know what I'm gonna do. If you follow me at all, you know. You know, you know, you know. We're gonna throw in some bubbles. Bubbles, gotta have some bubbles. No art piece is complete. And then I'm gonna pick it up and kinda give you um, a, closer, a closer look at the piece. So I'm gonna just put some of this in my hand. I'm gonna stand up and look down at it so I can decide if anything needs a fixin'. Um, I do see that it's a little shy on this side, but I'm honestly not even going to worry about it. I think it's pretty. It's not perfect. It's not ever gonna be. I'm not ever gonna worry that it isn't. We'll add a few more bubbles. I'm just gonna smatter them in around my wreath. We'll add some in the middle. Just drop a few here and there. It's almost like a frost. Frost, a little frosty. And these will stick to that wet resin and it'll be just fine. Look at that. I feel like I need a little something like right here, but it's kind of the same on this end, so I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm gonna leave it, y'all. I'm gonna leave it. I'm not displeased with how it looks, so I'm not gonna futz. I'm not gonna do it, Julie. All right. I'm gonna see if I can get this a little close to you. It's really heavy. Oh, hang on. That is the bottom. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I'm gonna kind of pull it down and so you can see all of the ornaments and those bubbles at the end, they're just clear bubbles. They kind of just fill it out and give it that little finishing touch. Look at that. Is that not beautiful? And it was so easy. All you have to do is make a donut. Just make a donut, right? <laughs> just put a cup in the middle and make yourself a donut. I'm